So Tim Sheaf announced a few days ago that he is no longer vegan. And of course, the interpretation by vegan YouTube is he was never really vegan. There have been a slew of stereotypical vegan response videos, of course, saying the same shit we hear time and time again. You didn't do it right. The science says that a plant-based diet is ideal for human health and longevity and performance. You were never really vegan. Being the kind of last thing they like to say when the whole health argument falls apart, they say, well, veganism is not about health. Veganism is not a diet. Veganism is an ideology. Veganism is an ethic. So Tim Sheaf, who ran a company called Ethics, whose entire ideology, whose entire online persona, whose entire income, right, which most people worship money in the modern world, in this nihilistic world, in this material world, you see it on vegan YouTube. Right, vegan YouTubers accepting money from Saudi princes to push their agenda. Vegan YouTubers openly supporting McDonald's. Like everybody's favorite, totally mentally stable vegan YouTuber, Joey Carbstrong. Look at those beautiful Carbstrong eyes. Right, most vegans, most people in general these days, bow down before the mighty dollar. Tim Sheaf's income was based around veganism. Tim Sheaf's ideology was veganism. Tim Sheaf's worldview was based around veganism. And he tried really hard. He tried everything to stay vegan. And what does veganism do for him now? What does the vegan community have to say to Tim? Who regained his health, physical and mental, by including animal products again? Well, they say, we hate you, Tim. They say, you were never a vegan. We don't want you. They say, shame, shame, shame. Right? Leaving veganism is kind of like leaving Scientology. You get mobs of mentally ill, deranged, obsessed, brainwashed trolls harassing you day in and day out. And what is the excuse that these people make for Tim? Oh, he's just being selfish. He's not really ethical. He was never really vegan. Well, if you look at Tim's history online, Tim was the epitome of an ethical vegan. Tim was making posts about, you guys are murdering animals, you're eating rotten flesh, you're drinking mammary secretions that have pus and blood in them. Milk has blood and pus. You know, the, he was doing the standard vegan thing online. He even had a company called Ethics, which he stepped down from. Right? He stepped down from his entire platform to be honest with himself and with the world, to be honest with you. And what do you vegan YouTubers have to say? Oh, you were never really vegan. Oh, you did it wrong. Tim tried. Every single incarnation of a vegan diet you can think of. And of course, what the vegans have to say about that is, well, those are all the wrong way. You got to have Dr. Gregor's Daily Dozen. Dr. Gregor's Daily Dozen. Why didn't you have Goji Man fix you? Why didn't you send more poo-poo to Goji Man? He would have fixed you. They make all sorts of excuses, but they fail to see that this is a man who is clearly distraught over the decisions that he had to make, who is clearly conflicted and is going against his own interests monetarily and as a career. This guy was featured in a James Cameron film. This guy was featured in a James Cameron film that vegans are already preemptively busting a nut to all over the internet. Wait till you see Game Changers. It's going to change everything. We've got a big Hollywood movie coming out. Billions of dollars of advertising for the vegan diet. It's going to change everything in our grassroots revolution. Tim Sheaf sees through your nonsense, vegans. Tim Sheaf now knows. And I don't know Tim. But from the videos that I've watched 
And from his most video, his most recent video that he put out today, which I'm going to do a response to a little bit later this week, after all you vegans give your little cringe fest response videos, you got to have something to laugh at, right? But Tim has demonstrated that he sees the ideological pit that he dug himself with veganism. This ideology that gets people to fight against their locally produced agriculture, that gets people to fight against the local farmers, fight against small family farms, and support Monsanto, and support Bayer Monsanto. Remember, Bayer and Monsanto are now one. Right? Big ag, big pharma, one big entity. But they're trying to change the world, right? They're trying to make the world green. Go green, go vegan. Buy Monsanto products. Tim realized that he's been duped. In his most recent video, he talks about in the end of the video how vegans are being duped into fighting against small family farmers, into demonizing animal husbandry and locally produced protein sources. Right, So here we can have chickens. We've got 10 chickens. Look at this. i got a chicken at my door. Hey, get out of here. Shit. Chicken's gonna shit in my house if I don't chase it out. Right? We can have a bunch of chickens making us eggs constantly with very little input. They're eating bugs in the yards. We can have goats, cows. Well, you can have goats on very small pieces of land. You can have even sheep on very small pieces of land and be able to, and that will enable you to actually feed your entire family. A small piece of land, you can be producing proteins and fats that you are not going to get from any plant source locally. But vegans are duped into fighting against that and instead promote McDonald's like Joey Carbstrong. So let's hear what Joey Carbstrong has to say to Tim Sheaf, who gave up his livelihood, who gave up his source of income to get his health back. That's how poorly he was doing on a vegan diet. All of these vegans want to say, Oh, Tim Sheaf, you're so fit. Oh, Tim Sheaf, you're just having the placebo effect. Oh, Tim Sheaf, you're lying. You were never really vegan. But they're failing to recognize how difficult it was for Tim to make this decision. Tim could have kept riding that gravy train. Tim was going to be in Game Changers. Tim was going to be in the James Cameron film. Tim could have spread the vegan message further and promoted it. But he couldn't do it in his own conscience. He had to leave it. He had to get his health back. Let's hear what Joey Carbstrong has got to say. Uh, if you guys aren't subscribed to Joey Carbstrong, absolutely hilarious. He's not. This isn't a... Uh, you might think it's, it's like a spoof of vegans, you know, that he's doing parody videos, but this guy's 100% for real. Um, he's legit. Let's check him out. And for me, I'm here to defend animals, and I'm sure Tim understands that. It's not about me and Tim. This is about the dangerous message he's promoting. And from someone who seems a little bit unsure, a little bit confused, you know, may have lost his way. But Tim is going to have a lot of people harshly judging him as it is. So I want to make this video as least personal as possible and just make it about the facts and about, you know, my defense of animals in this situation. Uh, so you probably know a bit about... So Joey Carbstrong speaks on behalf of the animals. Joey Carbstrong speaks for that chicken. Joey Carbstrong speaks on behalf of the crickets and the cows. And Joey Carbstrong says, it is speciesist that you'll eat fish. Why did you choose fish? Are you being speciesist, he says. Well, what about all the flies? What about all the animals? What about the rats that are killed in wheat threshers? Here in Ecuador, I was talking to a buddy of mine the other day in the sauna, and he was telling me about how disgusting the sugarcane manufacturing business is, especially the export stuff. Now, sugarcane comes, sugar comes from sugarcane. You grow this big, tall grass, and then you melt that grass down, or you basically you juice it, and then you melt down the juice, and then you dry it to get sugar. And then all the minerals get extracted from it and you just, you're just left with sucrose. 
right, with uh, fructose and glucose, white sugar. But in this process, when the sugar cane is about to get juiced, there are loads of insects, loads of rats, mice, that end up actually getting juiced with the sugar cane. So all you vegans out there on your high-carb diets think that this isn't cruelty-free. Rats are getting ground up with your sugar cane. Rats juice gets mixed in with that cane juice before it gets processed in your beautiful, refined white sugar that you buy at Walmart or that you have in your vegan apple pie from McDonald's in the UK because it's vegan, mate. Come on, Joey. Come on, buddy. So we're not going to watch too much of Joey's video. Let's just uh, give a couple more seconds here and hear what he has to say. About Tim anyway, I'm not here to be a health specialist. If you want health advice, guess who you go to? The plant-based doctors who have 30... If you want health advice, go to these skeletal remains of human beings that I call vegan diets, do vegan doctors, like Dr. Gregor. Right? Go to Dr. Gregor for health advice. Go to Dr. Clapper for health advice, who says that women who are pregnant should go on a vegan diet. Go to these people. Now, Joey Carpstrong loves to say that veganism is not about health. It's about the animals. And at least he's honest. He, in a roundabout way, admits that a vegan diet destroys your health and is all about sacrificing your health for the animals. All right, so let's move on. We've got Hench Herbivore. Hench Herbivore. Everybody's favorite vegan bodybuilder. Looking vibrant and highly intelligent in this video. Hench Herbivore, let's hear what he has to say about Tim Sheaf being never really vegan. Just a quick video today. I'm feeling a little bit under the weather. Don't worry, everyone. I'm not going to eat anything weird like lion's legs. I kind of knew this was coming. I feel like he was trying to manipulate his audience in preparation a few weeks back. Okay, Hench Herbivore. You feeling a little under the weather, huh? Well, isn't that normal? Isn't that a normal side effect of your diet? I mean, if I were going to go ahead and do a quick browse, quick browse, rather, through vegan YouTube, I'm going to find loads of people talking about how they're just not feeling great on a vegan diet. But that's no excuse not to be on a vegan diet, right? Because it's not about the health, it's about the animals. So Virtue signals at the beginning of his video about how he knows he's not healthy. He doesn't feel well at all. But it's cool because it's for the animals. Great move. I really like that. Um, that's, a, uh, that's a clever little, little judo move that you did there, buddy. Good job, Hench. His legs. I kind of knew this was coming. I feel like he was trying to manipulate his audience in preparation a few weeks back. Okay, he manipulate his audience in preparation a few weeks back. He told everybody he's eating animal products. He came out a few months later just to remind you he's still not a part of your movement. Right? And he's being very nice. He's not like Bobby. Bobby's out there throwing daggers. Bobby of, uh, of Bobby's perspective, check out his YouTube channel. He's out there telling people exactly what what he feels about it. Now, Tim's being much more measured, being very diplomatic, perhaps out of kindness, out of respect to his former business partners who let him go from his business ethics, ethics clothing. And we'll get into that in a minute because it's not all just bad news with ethics clothing. Hench Herbivore has some really good news for us. Let's jump forward here. I think this is about the spot. He showed him what all his problems were. And then as far as I can tell, he didn't do anything about it. If I'm correct, that kind of f***ed me off a little bit because I'm a patron of Goji Man and the money that I and others pay to fund those tests could have gone to help someone else who actually wants to get their health in order. I really hope that Tim doesn't throw veganism under the bus now and doing all of his past work. Crazy f like this won't help. The, the first night after I had that salmon, I had a wet dream. I hadn't <laughs> ejaculated in months. Not that I wanted to hear about this in the first place. Okay, first of all, before he gives us more things to laugh at, let's talk about his infatuation with Goji Man. So Goji Man offered to heal Tim Sheaf. He said he's going to fix his gut problems. 
Tim so kindly sent him his poo-poo to add to his collection. And guess what? It didn't work out. Now, Goji Man says that Tim just never got in touch with him. He left him cold. Which is funny, because that's a pattern of behavior that Goji Man also exhibits. <laughs> Goji Man? Goji Man? Who threatened to sue me for criticizing him. Goji Man in the past has even set up a meeting to speak with me privately outside of the vegan YouTube, outside of his frame games. He stood me up, never contacted me since then. So Goji Man, how does it feel, buddy? How does it feel to get stood up? So Tim Sheaf didn't follow up with Goji Man. What a surprise. What did Goji Man tell Tim Sheaf? Goji Man's test results, which are just Great Plains organic acids tests that you can get for much cheaper directly from the source. You don't have to pay Goji Man money to get it for you. Um, he had high oxalate. So what would Goji Man have told Tim Sheaf to do? He would have had to tell Tim Sheaf to go on a low oxalate diet. Tim also had major issues with fungal overgrowth. So he would have had to go on a diet that would not feed that fungus. Now, I don't remember if it was candida or if it was some other fungus. Um, there are symbiotic relationships between multiple types of fungus that can uh, get overgrown in our gut. Goji Man would have had to tell Tim Sheaf to do a diet that was both low in oxalate and that wouldn't be feeding his fungal overgrowth. Goji Man would have also told Tim to take some antibiotics, but the natural antibiotics. I know. Tim had some other bacterial overgrowth, a specific bacteria that is uh, very resistant to most antibiotics. I'm not sure what the great Goji Man would have told Tim to do in that situation. But Goji Man said he filmed the response video and he realized that he was very triggered. What a surprise. All right, what a surprise. A man who names himself after a bitter little fruit was triggered over somebody getting their health back by leaving the vegan ideology that wrecked his health in the first place. Goji Man was triggered. But what would have Goji Man's recommendations been? What is a diet that is low in oxalate and that will not be feeding a lot of these negative gut bacteria, so-called bad gut bacteria, right, that have become imbalanced in a lot of these vegans' guts? What would he have told them to eat? What is a low oxalate vegan diet? Where are you going to get protein? What protein sources are low in oxalate? Soy is pretty high in oxalate. Wheat, very high in oxalate. Tim's not able to digest the beans. He's had seemingly sort of IBS type symptoms and digestive distress, which is why he did the fast. And doing that fast ended up leading Tim to the Conclusion that the vegan diet just wasn't working for him. He felt amazing on a total fast, not eating any vegan food. As soon as he added back animal foods, the symptoms went away and he started feeling better. What's the problem? He cured the side effects of the vegan diet. The side effects of the vegan diet clearly being depression, sarcopenia, bone mineral density loss, muscle loss. Mental deterioration. Emotional deterioration. It stopped. He started eating animal foods. He had a wet dream the first night. Let's finish up with Hench Herbivore here. Hench has some thoughts on the wet dream. But some context would have been good, i.e. has he not engaged in sexual activity for the past few months, in which case what do you expect? Or does he suspect that he has hormone issues caused by his diet. Rest assured the Joe Rogans among you, vegans do not need to ingest cholesterol to form an opinion, nor do we need to ingest it to form testosterone. We How do you form your testosterone, Hench Herbivore? What do you think about testosterone replacement therapy, Hench Herbivore? Right? Come on, dude. What are you talking about hormones? We all see you. <laughs> We've seen your videos, buddy. All right, anyway, so he wasn't too happy about him talking about the way. Well, maybe it's just because he, hasn't, he hadn't busted in a while. And that's why he had a wet dream the first time he ate animal foods. Right now, um, Joey Carbstrong over here was very upset about the comment about, uh, about his so-called wet dream. 
and if I remember correctly, he says something to the likes of, this is very dangerous information. You are misleading your audience and you're making them associate sexuality and this pleasurable feeling with the murder of animals. Well, how hypocritical, because all you folks like to talk about the game changers. Right? Just wait till the game changers comes out, says Joey Carbstrong. Well, we talked about this and we had the clip pulled up. I don't have the clip pulled up right now, but we had the clip pulled up in one of my recent streams where we talked about the Game Changer film openly talking about <laughs> veganism being better for your boners. So, right, they did this really very unscientific experiment where they gave people a plant-based meal or a meat-based meal that was high in cholesterol and they measured the hardness of their penis throughout the night. I shit you not, this is what they claim. Plant-based news, um, which is Prince Khalid's channel that uh, Klaus runs, Prince Khalid's servant Klaus runs. Uh, Prince Khalid's channel, Plant-Based News, <laughs> actually ran a clip of this video, uh, of, this, uh, of this part of the Game Changers. That's marketing veganism for boners. So I guess it's okay to associate erections with veganism if you're trying to sell veganism, but it's not okay for Tim to talk about his hormones being obviously corrected, right? Something happening hormonally. The first time he ate animal foods, <laughs> that's not okay for him to talk about. It's just a stereotypical, hypocritical vegan nonsense we see here but let's finish up with hench over here who's going to tell you guys why everything's okay don't worry everything's okay hench herbivore to the rescue veganism make all the cholesterol we need from plant precursors anyway the one good thing to come out of all of this is that conscious living clothing company ethics has been able to drop tim from the team Although Tim was the founder back in the day when it was Ethics and Antics, he now no longer works for the company, nor makes any profit from it. The company is run by vegans, for vegans, and I'm excited to announce that I'm becoming a brand ambassador. Let's all get behind Ethics and make it the next Nike. A Nike that puts people, animals, and the planet first. <laughs> all right, so don't worry guys. Tim Sheaf is no longer part of ethics, but Hench Herbivore is going to step up and try to get some of those ethics dollars, those ethical dollars. So make sure to subscribe and like his video. Make sure to give him some money on Patreon so that he can afford his vegan diet. Who else here? Who else? We've got Ryan from Happy Healthy Vegan. This is another really funny YouTube channel. If you're not subscribed to Happy Healthy Vegan, make sure to subscribe to them. Um, also, not satire. They're totally 100% real. Um, this is not a skit from Portlandia. This is the real people. These are real happy, healthy vegans. Hey, I'm Angie. And I'm Ryan. And we are Happy, happy Healthy, healthy Vegan. vegan. Yeah. <laughs> sure, most of you guys have seen plenty of videos recently on YouTube. People coming out responding to well, why I'm leaving vegan videos. We're not going to be influenced by them. We're just going to really share with you the reasons why we're vegan, why we're still vegan, why we're not leaving yeah. vegan. First thing I have to say is like, why am I vegan? Because I'm vegan. Like, that's yeah. Why First thing I have to say is like, some upspeak. Why am I vegan? Because I'm vegan. <laughs> uh, it's 13 minutes of lulls guaranteed uh they're still vegan because oh they're so healthy it's because of the animals we feel so awesome we're so awesome we're still vegan well guess what guys no one really cares everyone's here talking about tim sheaf tim sheaf who's an actual athlete tim sheaf who actually is honest with his audience has come out and said it's just not working out it's not me it's you, veganism. So anyways, stereotypical vegan response videos. Stereotypical vegan. Bitching, whining, crying, pointing the finger, and playing the blame game. 
Now I'm happy for Tim Sheaf. Obviously, Tim Sheaf is not sweating it. Tim Sheaf is getting his health back. You look at the fullness in his face. Right, he seems to have actually added a significant amount of lean muscle issues, uh, lean muscle tissue over the last few months. His hormones have changed in a positive direction, and he's feeling better in general. Now I know Ryan is still thriving on a vegan diet. Clearly, Goji Man is still doing really well on a vegan diet. Clearly, Joey Carbstrong's mental health has never been better than on a vegan diet. And obviously, Hench Herbivore has figured out how to naturally manage and boost his testosterone levels on a vegan diet. But that doesn't mean it works for everybody. Now, the ethics of veganism we've discussed <laughs> at length here on this channel over the last couple years, but actually just over like the last year, how the ethics of veganism is a glass house built on a foundation of sand. If your diet is so morally superior, if your diet is so ethical, what's the excuse for all the people whose physical, mental, and spiritual health are being destroyed by this ideology? Is it speciesist to put the health of the crickets of the cows above the health of your children. And is veganism really reducing the suffering of all sentient beings? Or is veganism creating more suffering in all the human beings that have been duped into this ideology? I don't know. But the big question still remains. What about my game changers?